sorry I don't love you A friend I've grown accustomed to Cause with you is something isn't wrong Something isn't wrong Something isn't right Hey everyone, welcome to Geekdom is back this week. We have another music topic. This time I have on Craig Manning to talk all about Casey Musgraves. We're going in the artist direction here. And our first music episode was based on Apple Music, so obviously not quite the same approach we're taking here. But Craig, before we jump in, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. I was stoked that you were up for recording last minute to you know <laughs> save me from having to skip a week here of course and, no problem and you know casey was a pretty easy topic to come up with because i know you and i have both talked about her a bit and you know it didn't require a lot of preparation on our parts because no, she no, only I just... has Listen to the two albums. So that's pretty much all I did. Yeah. And I sort of just went through and listened to some songs from both of the albums because, you know, the big singles and everything, it's like we've heard those plenty to not need to necessarily go through and listen to all of the songs again. But, right. you know, she only has the two albums and then she did a Christmas release, which we'll probably skip over that simply because Christmas albums are largely not original songs. Or if there are original songs, it's only one or two, and then the rest are, you know, your standard Christmas songs. But right. her first release, same trailer, different park. When did you first hear about this? Was it right when it came out, or was it a little while after? No, so this came out, looks like March 2013. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, about about four years ago now. Uh, I didn't hear it until end of the year list started coming out, actually. Um, 2013 was, it wasn't before I started listening to country, but it was like before I got really into it, because that sort of happened in 2014, 2015. Um, but she started showing up on a lot of lists. I think she got nominated for the... Best New Artist Grammy, so this would have been around the beginning of December, probably, when I first listened to it that year. How about you? You have a much better timeline than I do. I just know that I probably heard the singles, so Merry Go Round, I believe, was the first one she released off of that, and then Follow Your Arrow came with that big performance she did at... I want to say it was the Grammys, but it also could have been one of the country award shows. I, she definitely had a Grammy performance, and I think it was that song. So Yeah, and I feel like that's really when she started to blow up, but I don't remember when I actually sat down and listened to the full album all the way through. All I know is I saw her perform at Outside Lands whatever year I went, but I don't have my ticket anymore because I didn't end up going to the third day. So I left it for someone else to go if they wanted to at my friend's okay. apartment in San Francisco. So I'm gotcha. drawing a blank on what year she was at that. I'll have to look it up. But I saw her perform live and I knew the words to the song. So obviously at some point before Outside Lands, I had listened to her and the album. And then, you know, I'm pretty sure the appearance was definitely before pageant material came out which is oh, her yeah, yeah. second album. And, you know, like you said, same trailer, different park was four years ago. And if you think about some of the topics we're talking about today within the music scene and everything like that, not necessarily the country music scene, because I feel like that's something that is always totally different from the typical, you know, Blink-182 yellow card type of music scene that you and I sort yeah. of follow through chorus and some the of the quote websites unquote, scene right right and you know she's been tackling these topics that are just now being discussed more heavily in the scene and she was doing this four years ago so you know she definitely seems to have an understanding of what's going on not necessarily in the music scene but in the world in general i guess you could say and the fact that she's willing to tackle those in country songs, because country artists, you know, they have some songs that will get political and everything, as people might know with the Dixie Chicks and everything like right, that. But yeah. for the most part, they're sort of storytelling. They're not necessarily, you know, talking about their own lives. You know, Carrie Underwood's Before He Cheats is probably not about her life <laughs> at all. I don't think she even wrote that. So <laughs> Right, like, right. She writes some of her stuff, I think, but a lot of it is songwriters, uh, like 
like Casey. I mean, Casey, I don't think ever wrote a song for her, but um, Casey did write Mama's Broken Heart with Miranda Lambert um, and Brandy Clark, or for Miranda Lambert. Um, and that's sort of a similar song to Before He Cheats. So um, that's interesting. But yeah, I think this album um, definitely sort of started getting me back into country, I guess, because 2013, if you'll recall, was also sort of the uh, the crest of the the bro country wave, I guess. Right. Because um, that's the year that Florida Georgia Line were really blowing up. Uh, and they were sort of the kings of that. So that that was all over um, a c- country radio at the time. And then she comes along, and she's not singing like about the generic. I mean, she's singing about those tropes, but sort of from a from the different side. Right. So she's like not romanticizing the the small town life, but she's uh, like wants to get out. That's merry go round, and then. She always sings about, like, smoking weed and, <laughs> you know, Follow Your Arrow was huge, definitely, because that was, like, the the love who you love um, message in her music. Right. And it's interesting looking back, because all of that was very groundbreaking and unique four years ago. And now I feel like there are a lot of artists that are singing about that kind of stuff. Um especially female country artists and she sort of she sort of broke down that door i guess um to the point where i would call this album um along with uh jason isbell's southeastern which is the same year uh i i call these sort of the two most important country records of the decade so far okay because i think they really paved the way for like um on isbell's side he sort of paved the way for sturgill and um Stapleton, who have since been nominated for Album of the Year. And on Casey's side, you have, like, um, Maren Morris, who is blowing up now. And Ashley Monroe and Kelsey Ballerini and all these artists who are now starting to gain traction after, you know, Florida Georgia Line and Luke Bryan and the, the bro country people sort of pushed women in country off the radio, I guess. So even though Casey never had a huge hit, like I think Merry Go Round was the biggest one, but like it wasn't it wasn't like a, a huge smash or anything. But right. she I think is more influential than you would probably realize from looking at like sales. Yeah, definitely. And for reference, the Outside Lands performance I was talking about was in 2014. So it was the year after Same Trailer, Different Part came out, which would explain why I knew the majority of the songs, because by then, clearly, I had listened to the full album. And, you know, she has a very unique sound. And I think maybe while most country stations will play her songs, she's not really going to cross over too much into other stations like we've seen some artists like Carrie and Miranda do but another thing to note is that she went on a huge tour with Katy Perry so she's still sort of blurring the lines between genres here even though her roots are definitely more country than a lot of the country artists today because you know she has that old-timey feel to it and even the way that her and her band dress I don't know if you've yes, seen them. Yes, I saw them uh, last March, I think, about a year ago. So, uh, yeah, the whole show is very, it's sort of country kitsch, I guess. Right, so they have, like, right. the, the, like, neon cactuses and, uh, like, weren't the, weren't they, like, Light Up Cowboys? That was her band. They were, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lights on their outfits and, yeah, yeah. So that that's pretty funny to think about. Yeah, and she even did, I think it was probably a Crossroads episode where she did a crossover with Katy Perry, too. And I think that's sort of really, I don't know if that's necessarily when that relationship started to come to fruition, but it seems like because the two of them are sort of so unique in their genres, they probably mesh pretty well as people in general, not just as artists. So I think, you know, that's something that makes that 
even more interesting that, you know, Katy Perry would take a country singer out on tour with her because, you know, these big stadium and arena tours, a lot of times people want to see the same kinds of artists or they want to see these really insane tour lineups. Right. And I think it's just really great that she had the chance to sort of get her music out to people who might not have listened to it prior to seeing K- Katy Perry's tour. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And well, like Katy Perry, she started out as country in some some capacity, right? She was on Warp Tour, so I think she was more leaning towards that scene. Okay. Well, she sort of she she took a long road to stardom, I guess. Yeah. So, um, and and actually, Casey did too. I think I think she has a few, like two or three independently released albums that, like, you can't find anywhere, and I've never heard them. Um, I've I've talked to people who have, and I, I guess they're not all that great compared to um, same trailer because I think she was pretty young. Um, but you know, she, th- these people have been writing and and releasing music probably for longer than than we know of them. So, like maybe maybe uh, Katy Perry and Casey Musgraves like go back even further and like knew each other. True. Um, I forget where Katy Perry is from, but it's somewhere, somewhere in the in the Bible Belt. Okay. <laughs> and I think Casey was from Texas. And, yeah. Um, because Casey and Marin Morris were actually friends before Marin Morris blew up, and I think Casey might have like helped her get her foot in the door a little bit. So, okay. According to Wikipedia, Katy Perry was born in California, so I don't know where her parents maybe were from, but, you know, Casey's definitely, you know, Texas girl all the way, and that's not surprising considering a lot of the country stars from today come from, you know, the Texas, Oklahoma area, especially Oklahoma. I feel like half of them are from Oklahoma sometimes. Well, especially if you're listening to the alt-country stuff, like that's... A lot of that is definitely Oklahoma or Texas or right. like Mississippi or Alabama. It's not necessarily like they're born and raised in Nashville. Yeah, like they yeah. Might go to Nashville trying to to get famous, but all those those states and areas have like pretty vibrant uh, country music scenes to the point where like Oklahoma and and Texas like they have their own sort of like genres of country. Like in Texas, I think it's called Red Dirt is what they call it. Okay. Um, and there are tons of artists who are just like do really well down there. Like they have like a radio format that plays that kind of music and everything. So they don't even need um, they don't even need Nashville, but they they just don't really tour that far outside of the outside of like the Texas area. So it's interesting that country has sort of gone that way to the point where like. A lot of it is regional and underground, and if you want to uh, reach a, a broader audience, you still sort of have to go to Music Row and uh, and play the game and work with some of those like superstar songwriters and producers. Like even on this this record, Casey is working with um, Luke Laird and Shane McAnally, who are probably the two biggest producers in country right now. Yeah. So it's it's like I don't know, can anyone can anyone just like make it on their own? I don't I don't know. Yeah, and even on Wikipedia it says that same trailer different park was her actual fourth album, but we see it as her first because it's sort of really the first one that got all of this attention and it sort of made her well known. And I did find two songs that are on neither of the two albums we're talking about today and they're available on amazon you can buy them for like two bucks for the for both songs and it's just acoustic versions i have not listened to them yet but i have found them and (laughs) it looks like these are definitely like you said from before same trailer different park and it would be interesting to sort of see those first few albums that we can't seem to find anywhere and you know she was discovered 
pretty far in advance of same trailer, different park being released. Right. And, you know, it kind of makes me curious as to what she was doing, like those five years before this album came out. But, you know, this album was definitely a great sort of mainstream debut for her, much like, you know, Marin Morris's recent album. And obviously, most artists will have music come out before they sort of get that one album that puts them on the map and everything. And the only one I can think of that maybe didn't have that same path was Carrie Underwood because she was on American Idol when she was so young. I think she was like 17 or 18 maybe when she was on Idol. And the fact that she's had such a great career and such a long career after Idol is sort of really impressive and a testament to the country scene because I can't even name most of the other winners anymore and what they're doing other than maybe Kelly Clarkson. (laughs) The last one I could name would be Chris Allen. Uh, And he was like 2009 maybe. But I don't think I can name anyone since then. Like, uh, see, I forgot he even won. (laughs) He, he's done some stuff with Butch Walker. So I've uh, sort of kept more tabs on him than, um, than a Most. lot of the others, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely, it's a thing about country. I think um, still valuing good vocalists to the right. point where I've seen, like, I've seen people call Casey Musgraves not a great vocalist, like, because because she doesn't have the traditional, like, powerful, right, like, belting country voice that Carrie Underwood does. But I really like like the tone of her voice and think it works really well with the, um, the songwriting she's trying to do. Like, I don't think another artist could do a song like Merry Go Round as well as she does. Cause her delivery is so like sort of restrained and just heart wrenching just right. in the way she sings the song. Um, and seeing that one live was especially great. Cause she just played it acoustic and like they turned the house lights down and, Everyone sang along, and uh, that was that was fantastic, seeing that. And she's a great live vocalist too. So um, I think I, I hope that eventually she she gets more of her due, um, because I think she's a really great songwriter, obviously, and someone who is more original in her writing and more uh, while also still retaining a a foot in the traditional country realm. Um, But a lot more original than a lot of stuff on the radio. Uh, So hopefully with album number three, which is supposedly coming soon, that'll happen. Uh, And maybe this is a good segue to uh, pageant material. Yeah. Um, She has said, at least she said in 2015, that her next album is going to be a departure, which would be interesting because pageant material... um, even though I think I like it more than same trailer, didn't really have the same impact because I think it was a pretty safe record. Um, It sounds very similar to the first one. And uh, I'd be interested to hear work work with some different people and try like some different style songs. Um, Maybe do some very storytelling oriented stuff because a lot of the stuff that she was writing on this record on pageant material was very um, personal and sort of like a reaction to, I guess, blowing up on that first album. Yeah. And I think, you know, in the quote unquote scene, we talk a lot about sophomore slumps. And while we've already established that, you know, these albums clearly weren't her first two albums, really they were because we can't find any of the previous ones at least yeah that's i bet how you I'm could look at it. you could download them somewhere but you can't buy them anywhere right as far as i know so they they're not don't. readily available yeah. to the public so that's what i'm going based off of here and i you know i don't think she had that sophomore slump with this record and you know it might have not had the same impact as same trailer different park because you know i think when that album came out the different sound sort of just I wouldn't say shocked some people but I think a lot of people were pleasantly surprised by it and I know you and I are clearly included in that group and with pageant material you know I was really excited when 
I knew this was coming out because I liked the first album so much that I kind of just kept wanting more. And I think she maybe even played at least a song or two off of this album at Outside Lands because chances are with the album coming out in 2015, I believe, she probably had some of the songs done and everything in 2014 because you typically have, you know, singles come out before the release and then after the release. It seems like country music has way more singles come out on albums than well, most yeah. other I mean, people. <laughs> what they do, especially with female artists, is they like will release EPs, and they didn't do this to Casey, um, but they'll release like a five song EP um, and then release a single off of it. And if the single gets big, then they'll like go ahead with the whole album. Uh, but if it doesn't, they might shelf the album. Uh, and that's what happened. That's so almost what happened with uh, Maren Morris, because she released five songs off her debut uh, on an EP, and it sort of was a slow burn. Um, and then My Church picked up steam, and then they like quickly announced the album, um, which had four of the five songs that were on the EP. Uh, so that has happened a bunch with country artists that I've gotten into is that like you discover them through this EP and then by the time the album comes out you've heard half of it which is sort of sort of annoying um, and it makes me excited when artists like like this blow up uh, at least to a certain extent because it means that won't happen anymore and they'll just be able to do what they want to do pretty much um, but I was definitely the only song I think I remember hearing from this before it came out was Biscuits, but that came out like a while before the record. Right. Like I think that came out in, in like March or something and the album didn't come out until late June. So Yeah. Yeah. And it's definitely really interesting the way country radio seems to work in comparison to other types of radio like Top 40, Pop Radio and that sort of thing because I've noticed on some Carrie Underwood albums, you know, she'll have five or six singles from an album. And I'm, and I'm over here like, that's literally half the album, guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, that's right. a lot of singles. And what will happen is, I think it's because of the way they handle radio play with country music that the song sort of has to be released as a single for them to play it on radio more often than not. And mm, okay. so Carrie will have singles that are released as singles after the album is already out. And sometimes it's like a year after the album has come out. And I think that's because they're just trying to continuously get that radio play and, you know, fill the gap between albums and everything like that. So it's definitely an interesting approach. And like you said, I haven't seen that too much with Casey, but Biscuits was definitely the lead single. And I think she did have a couple others or maybe just one more. Okay, here it says Dime Store Cowgirl. Dime Store Cowgirl. Cowgirl. I think that was the only other single. Yeah, and, and that I think was in they August. stopped because it wasn't, neither of those really picked up traction. Which, right. Um, and, then, and then Dime Store Cowgirl was on like a bunch of best songs in the year list lists, and the album was on a bunch of end of the year lists as well. Um, and I think, you know, this, this came out in 2015, which was also um, the year that Chris Stapleton released his album. And that, like, he didn't get any airplay until, basically until the CMAs, when the Justin Timberlake duet happened. And then he sold a million copies in, like, two weeks right. of an album that had been out for, you know, half a year. Uh, and I think this, this is really a sign of, of country radio being broken. I mean, I think to an extent radio in music and its role in music is kind of broken anyway but in country it definitely um it still holds relevance as far as who gets signed and who like nashville will bankroll an album for um but it's not a reflection of like what what people necessarily want to hear in the genre um, and I think country radio is the reason that you have or ever have had people who are like, oh, I, I like to listen to everything but country um, because it, it's not very good. Like, and I say this is someone who like mainly listens to country. Like that's, that's usually what I come back to. 
um, most of, of, of any genre. And if I'm looking for like a discovery playlist on Spotify, I'll look for the country playlist or the, the alt country playlist or the folk playlist or the Americana playlist or something like that. But, um, when I listen to country radio, it all just, it's like mostly artists that I couldn't tell you who they are. And it mostly sounds the same. And the songs are mostly about the same things. Uh, and I, I don't know anyone in real life or online who likes that kind of country, but I know a lot of people who like Casey Musgraves and Jason Isbell. And, and like, if you go to concerts for these artists, like, they're sold out and everyone there knows every song and they're playing like like not small clubs either like they're playing decent sized venues um so it's really interesting to me that a bunch of these artists have those kinds of sizable followings but they're not getting like airplay um so you know, I don't know what kind of song would get Casey on, on the radio, because like we were talking about, she doesn't have like the classic female country voice, necessarily. Um, but it, it just seems weird that someone like that, who is respected by just about everyone, wouldn't be able to like get a, a, a platinum single or something. Yeah, and I think, you know, I don't know what it's like for country stations in other states, but here in California, I've definitely heard Casey played on country radio. There are two main stations sort of in the Southern California area that mm -hmm. I'm in, and, you know, Follow Your Arrow will get played, and I'm pretty sure I've heard Biscuits at least a couple times on the radio, but I'm not huge on listening to the yeah. radio in general. I've heard Biscuits on the radio, too, but... um it just it do doesn't get played as much as like the latest like Luke Bryan single, I guess, is what I'm saying. I think the big thing with country radio right now is there are so many new male singers in country music that I literally can't keep them straight. And sometimes I can't tell them apart either. And I'm largely fine with a lot of the mainstream country music. But you know, I've been coming to you for recommendations on, you know, some of the lesser known artists, but you know, I'll always enjoy listening to Carrie Underwood or Miranda Lambert. And you know, Maren Morris is more mainstream now, but she still has sort of that, you know, smaller artist feel to her and her music and i think casey is sort of the same for me i would put casey and brandy clark maybe in the same category just based well, on yeah, they, what their songwriting is like yeah, and i know definitely. they've you know they have a similar style but their voices are so different and i think you know they're the two that don't really get played on radio quite as much and you know country music seems to just be really male dominated at the mm -hmm. moment and not the good males either it's like i don't understand like i could look at the charts right now um and i wouldn't know who most of those people are uh even though i follow country music a lot and you know like stapleton everyone loves him basically and he sold a ton of copies and he got nominated for the grammy for album of the year and he didn't have like a a charting single like he might have had like one of his songs was on on the charts but he didn't like get a number 1 hit or anything and then Sturgill Simpson's the same way like he is like the most country sounding singer that's probably working today and like granted there was not a a single ready song on his last album but um he didn't get played either uh and yeah Brandy Clark I've always thought that she and and Casey are pretty similar and she has looks like four or five co-writes on this record on pageant material so they definitely work together a lot as well yeah definitely and you know Natalie Hemby even has a co-write on this and I think she is someone we talked about recently with her latest album and I yeah think that's actually that's her first record and she's been writing she's been writing for like big artists for a long time like she's a go-to 
co-writer for Miranda Lambert and has been for years. Uh, and she wrote, co-wrote a few of the tracks on the Marin Morris record and uh, has co-written a bunch of hits or singles for other artists. And like they finally let her release an album. And she might have had to self-release it. Like, it might be on her label. Oh, okay. Um, so that's sort of, like, I guess, symptomatic of the, the issue in country music where, like, they're not giving a lot of these more, like, artistically-minded artists, especially females, um, like, the time of day, which sucks because they're actually making great music and like that's probably that or Steve Mochler's album those are my two favorite albums of the year so far and those are both sort of albums that could like be really successful in in country music I think if they got played on the radio like there are singles on those records um, that I could hear getting played on radio uh, and they just it doesn't happen and I don't know if it's like a production thing or if they're looking for, like, the generic voiced people, I think they definitely do that with male artists. Yeah, I think it could also just be a major label thing because mm -hmm. I feel like they have more resources to obviously get stuff on the radio. And, you know, majoring in music industry, I got a chance to briefly sort of know how this goes with radio play and everything and you know i would never try it myself i did send some cds from a release on my record label to some radio stations but i was shooting more for like college radio stations so i'm sort of curious to see if there are any colleges that are sort of playing more underground country music that we won't right. get to hear on these big radio stations and you know i well, think i'm sure there are there, at my college radio um I knew a guy there, and this is in Kalamazoo, Michigan, so it's not, like, country, like, central. Right. Uh, but he had, like, a like an Americana hour. Okay. Uh, and he would, he would play. I don't know if, like, necessarily what he would play, because um, I just, I, by, that time, by that point in my life, I just wasn't, wasn't interested in listening to anyone's radio show and was more interested in just, like, plugging in my iPod when I got in the car and... Um, but, like, it's good to know that stuff is out there. But, like, if if the major labels still have that much of a stranglehold on, on radio, it, it really begs the question of what purpose radio serves anymore, I think. Because when you have, like, everyone can get a Spotify account. Right. And just, like, find a playlist and, and go. And, like, everyone has some way that they can plug in their phone or their iPod in the car, be it like a an aux hookup, or I still have to use the like the tape, the cassette tape oh, thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because my car is more than fifteen years old. Right. Um, but like, I I just I can't envision the time that I would listen to the radio like by choice. So like, if I'm in someone's car and the radio's on, that's fine. But I don't know, I would never use it to discover music or like to yeah. tell me what is good or anything like that, and especially in country, because I think they are, well, especially in pop too, but we won't get into that. <laughs> but in country, because they have these artists that they could, that could be marketable and they, they don't get played. Yeah, and it's just sort of baffling to me how there aren't more women on the radio and country music or just, you know, represented in country music in general, because I feel like that's a genre that's sort of, it's never really been an all boys club. But, you know, because there are a lot of great women from, you know, the past and everything. You have Dolly Parton, Bonnie Raitt, and a bunch of these, you know, very, very famous country women. And it's sort of like, for a while there, we had a good stretch. We had, you know, like Reba, Martina McBride, Carrie Underwood, and they were all sort of still yeah, releasing things sort of at the, the same time. And Shania like Twain, the, especially. Yeah, from the mid-90s to the mid-2000s, I feel like women sort of ruled country music. Yeah. Like, because the Dixie Chicks were huge, and Shania, Shania Twain was huge, and, like, those artists were sort of the most marketable people in the genre. And then, like, I don't know if it was the, the Dixie Chicks, George Bush thing, and then they used that as an excuse to push 
women off country radio? Like, I, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, um, I have no idea. But it's just crazy how quickly it sort of dropped off in the male artists started taking over a lot more because you know like you said with the bro country kind of stuff with fgl luke bryan and even blake shelton gets into it here and there on certain songs but it largely is a bunch of male newcomers that i've been noticing and i think you know Marin morris and kelsey ballerini might be the you know like the two women newcomers that people are really paying attention to and I think, you know, maybe with this third album coming up from Casey, we'll see a little more of her songs getting on the radio. It'll definitely be interesting to see what direction she goes in with this, too. Like, if she keeps it more of the same or if she tries to maybe add another element or two mm -hmm. to her music. So Yeah, because she, she could go poppier if she wanted to. She could go more rootsy. Like right. she could do a very singer songwriter kind of record. She could like team up with Dave Cobb and make something akin to like uh Jason Isbell's Southeastern. Um, I think she could do pretty much whatever she wants to do. So I'm definitely I think that's going to come this year. I think I saw that like she was already in the studio and um they were recording it, so I'm guessing we'll get that sometime this summer. I hope so. And, yeah. It, it's de definitely interesting that Marin Morris and Kelsey Ballerini are, are sort of those artists that are doing well because, like, Marin Morris, you know, she was... She's been touring and making music since she was, like, 12 years old or something. And then right. she finally got a chance to make this record. Um, and then Kelsey, like, she's on an independent label. Yeah. Which is incredible because she, she had like three number one hits off that first album and she didn't need like the major label push. Like I'm sure they gave it a push and it sounds very major label E. Um, right. So that probably helped. But um, like that, her, she's not on like Big Machine or um, any of those major imprints that are are in country music. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the path to to mainstream success is for <laughs> Casey, if there is one. Right. Um, but she, she just has so many great songs on these first two records that I, I don't really care, I guess, ultimately. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd be happy to see that. But as long as, you know, we get another record of, of good songwriting and, and just good, good songs, I'll be fine. Yeah, and you can have, you know, a cult following and st still do really well for yourself in the music industry. You know, we've seen that with bands time and time again. And I think, you know, you mentioning Sturgill Simpson and Jason Isbell, I think they sort of fall into that same category. They might not have that mainstream sound, but they still have enough fans to right, right. continue making albums and well, it's yeah, Isbell worth sold their time. Out, like like four or five nights at the rhyme and he did it in like 15 minutes or something. Yeah. So like, I, I think he's doing fine. I don't think he needs uh, a single and I don't think, I don't think Casey needs a single. It's more like, you know, you want them to do well so that the labels will, will like bring them back in the studio and finance their records and put out their records every two years instead of, you know, delaying them. And cause that definitely happens in country, probably more than other genres where you can end up waiting like four or five years to hear something, not because they aren't writing songs, but because, you know, that it just keeps getting put on the shelf and, and the label doesn't want to release it. Right. And, you know, being in California, it actually amazes me how many people here really like country music because Obviously, Coachella is here, and that's sort of one thing, but people will come from out of state to go to that and everything because it's this huge festival. Festival, But even at Outside Lands, there was a decent crowd size for Casey, and this was only after that first album. So she wasn't necessarily as big as she was going to be yet because, you know, this was a festival that had Kanye West headlining. 
and the right. killers were headlining one night and macklemore was there so it largely did not have a ton of country artists to begin with and the fact that she was still able to pull a crowd out of that group of people that were there and largely not for country music in general it's just you know fascinating to me and i've seen other artists here you know i saw carrie underwood at the hollywood bowl and you know that sold very well for her i saw lady antebellum at one of the amphitheaters it keeps changing names so i'm just not going to bother with the name but it was you know here in orange county and then i saw chris young perform at the pacific amphitheater which is at the orange county fairgrounds and these artists all sell very well here especially when they play the big amphitheaters and everything and i think that's sort of a testament to country music not just being a nashville oklahoma tennessee texas thing you know Mm -hmm. well i also they just you know there's more to country songwriting than i think there is to a lot of other song like right in indie rock right now is sort of very boring to me because those songs they don't seem like they're about anything and pop it just there's not much substance there um right now especially i i was sitting in a uh I went out to Arizona this past week um with my wife's family. We went on vacation and we were we were sitting in this sushi restaurant eating lunch and they had like a pop sort of dance electronica playlist going. Okay. And it was like it was unlistenable because like they ha- they pick one lyric and repeat it over and over again. <laughs> and even in like pretty short simple country songs you have you have like a a story or a theme or something that it's actually about and a moral or um so i just think more and more people are relating to that in music and looking for that in music Um, and i think these artists are going to continue to do well because we've definitely seen i think we've seen the sea change with um, Sturgill getting that album of the year nomination and before him, I guess, Stapleton. But uh, definitely people are starting to respond more to that stuff and realize that it's not just like people singing about their trucks. Um, so, you know, hopefully, hopefully, would, I just like to hear more and more of these types of artists making records and getting getting noticed. And I think that's starting to happen too. Um, and more people are interested, definitely, like, the country music thread on Absolute Punk never used to get bumped very often, and the one on Chorus is like pretty consistently in the in the top like two or three pages. Like there are posts there every couple of days, and people are interested, and people are looking for stuff and recommendations, and people are wanting to talk about these new albums and looking forward to new albums from established artists and. You know that's that's been fun to see, and I hope it it keeps going. And I think you know artists like Casey uh, definitely help with that. Yeah, and I think whenever her album does come out, that thread will probably be pretty crowded and you know full of thoughts on that because I will definitely be joining in on that once that album comes out. And you know, I just really love. Casey's style in general, and because it was so different from everything else, I think that's what drew a lot of people to her in the first place and you know if she continues to perform at the award shows and maybe again on the grammys who knows what could happen because you know we saw marin do some performances at award shows and that's sort of when everyone was like wow she's fantastic (laughs) and you know yeah because she had she had the best performance at the grammys like that was the standout uh i know some people would probably say beyonce but um, like her performance with Alicia Keys was sort of one of the the lightning rod like social media moments of the night that people were like, "Who is this?" Yeah, she like they just she killed it, you know. So I think I think at this point the award shows might be helping like these country artists more than right. more like not just the award shows but also like late night performances and stuff because like yeah, definitely the past few years like. I don't know, Margot Price performed on uh, Colbert, I think, last year. And that was like her first big 
um, performance, and then John Moreland's performed on a few of them, um, and, and, and Sturgill's big moment, I guess, was that SNL performance. Um, so, like, these televised performances are, like, sort of opening people up to the country music that's not getting played on the radio. So I think, you know, that that's that's how it's getting out there anyway. And I think it's cool that they're getting those slots. And since the response is so good, I think it's going to happen more and more. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think that about wraps it up for what we have here. And thank you so much, Craig, for coming on to talk all about Casey Musgraves. Obviously, you know, maybe when that album drops, we'll have to do some follow-up episodes. I know I've talked to you about doing a follow-up episode on our Arrow episode already because it's like when you talk about (laughs) shows and artists that are actively doing things and shows that are actively going on, it's sort of hard to pick the right moment to sit down and talk about them. So, you know, we might just have to keep ongoing episodes here and, you know, do part two, three, whatever, (laughs) you know, because we don't know how long these things are going to go or how long these artists are going to be making music and you know aside from Casey's album that hopefully like you said will drop this year I'm really looking forward to Shania's new album that she's announced for this year because she hasn't released anything in forever so yeah, like you know that, when was her last one like 15 years ago or something yeah it was like definitely early 2000s it was that up album that they did a couple versions oh, yeah, of. yeah they had like the okay. red version the green version and they were sort of different styles like one yeah, they had was the, more i think country. it was a country and one was pop right? yeah yeah so that'll be interesting yeah sure. I'm i think i think i read that. that she like sort of had to relearn how to sing for some reason like there was some reason that she i think that might have been why she stopped recording is that there was something with her voice yeah um, so i think that'll probably i'm not terribly familiar with her catalog but i think whatever she releases next is going to be very different and um yeah it's going to be an interesting year i think eventually we'll get a new dixie chicks album too and they're the other ones who you know, I've been gone for a really long time. So um, I think everyone will it'll sort of start coming out of the woodwork. And um, hopefully, you know, we can... We can, I, I think Bro Country is pretty much dead at this point. <laughs> like, because those artists that sort of ruled it are, I, like, pointedly trying to evolve. Right. Um, some more successfully than others. but yeah. They've really toned uh, it down with that lately, yes, I've noticed. Yes. You know? and they they're not getting as much recognition at the award shows or airplay or anything like that. So, yeah, I think it's it's uh, we're definitely at a point in the genre where it's sort of at a crossroads, and I hope we move more toward this kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on. And- yep. Thank you. No problem. And to our listeners, as always, thank you for listening. If you guys could shoot a quick review or rating over on iTunes, that would be awesome. If not, no worries. Thank you for listening anyway. And as always, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. All right. See you.